Hello, this is different. Um, I don't really ever do things like this. Today's a big day because I'm leaving for the next six to potentially eight weeks. That's a long time. It is one of the aspects of what I do that I both love and struggle with because it leads to uh, quite a bit of a challenge to maintain relationships, to maintain a good routine, to be in a good rhythm. But it is also what I love doing the most in the whole entire world. So at the same time as I struggle with managing the process sometimes, I wouldn't change it for the world. So yeah, for this story, I wanted to take you along on what my life really looks like in between the big trips. These weird transitional days that we never show. But I also wanted to speak more openly about some hard times that I've worked through these last two years and the lessons I got from them and some tools that helped me that I think will also resonate with you. Right now, I'm trying to fix my suitcase. Very glamorous task, very exciting part of this whole process. Although I consider myself pretty much an expert world traveler at this point, I've been around. Uh, my suitcase doesn't have any wheels. There are three wheels that are missing. I'm gonna go see, I think I have an insurance on this. If I don't, I'm gonna have to buy a new one. So um, these are the exciting days um, that we have in between. I'm leaving in a few hours, I haven't packed, and uh, I decided to make this video in the middle of all of it. So. Um, I don't know if I'm really an expert at this point or if I'm just kind of insane. Um... Okay, plot thickens. Can't fix it here, but maybe somewhere else. We're gonna cut it a little tight with my first flight beginning this whole journey, which uh, would not be good. Bubble. Influencers in the wild. Now I need to take the metro to another store that has wheels. I'm using this location transition, using my one-wheeled suitcase as a tripod here to mention that this video is sponsored by Headspace. As many of you know, this is the guided meditation app that I've been using for the past five years, long before we started working with them. And something super exciting that not many of you know is that we created our own meditation pack on Headspace called Seeking Discomfort, uh, basically teaching you about how to handle the mental ups and downs that you will go through as you will go on to your own journey of seeking discomfort. There are guided meditations around the topic. There are reflection prompts that I walk you through for you to journal every single day. And there are interviews to help you go deeper into your own journey. Every single one of you who clicks the link in the description below to get 60 days for free, it would mean the world to me if you checked out that pack, listen to it all the way through, and let me know what you think. So um, yeah, I'm still uh, trying to fix this suitcase and I'm leaving in about two hours, an hour. So somehow I'm gonna mix time for packing, fixing the suitcase, going home, and heading to the airport within all of that time. So um, not going great. I have wheels. Wow, I just have to pack, I guess. Well, we are actually kind of doing all right on time now. Yeah. So, um, things work out. Please send help. Um, I've had to deal with Corey for way too long now and it's just starting to drive me actually insane. So, any way... I'm literally right here. I'm literally right here. But I'm speaking here. in the tiny mic. Could you, you didn't hear what I just said, right? What was that? Okay, good. We made it. <laughs> Before beginning this insane six-week journey, we are taking two days of relaxing with my family in the south of France. Uh-oh, change of country alert. Uh, to be honest, um, I was feeling a little uh, overwhelmed uh, traveling and making a video about meditation. It didn't feel like the right, the right vibe, if you know what I mean. So uh, I'm now in Los Angeles, and I decided we're gonna go on a road trip together, go out in nature, go out in Malibu, and I decided to just rent uh, one of these cars without a roof. Convertibles, I guess they're called. Um, I'm not good at this. I'm really not good at, <laughs> I don't know how to do videos where I'm just talking. I'm gonna drive us out there and then let's chat. That's, that's basic, that's, what's that? How do I transition from this? Editors, can you put like some, I don't have a drone, so can you put like some drone shots of like Malibu? And, like some, I don't know, some like beach music or something, transition? I think that should be. We are in Malibu, ladies and gentlemen. And I haven't had breakfast, so I'm feeling a little cranky. And I just saw a sign that says breakfast burritos served all day. Sounds like my kind of spot. So um, I'm gonna get some breakfast and then we're gonna see where that's gonna take us. Wow, look at 
of that. Okay, found my lookout spot. I wanted to come out here in nature. I felt more fitting to have a reflection about life, to be out somewhere peaceful, somewhere quiet. And um, I've been thinking a lot in the last couple of years that really, no matter who you are, no matter what you do or where you live, life is at one point or another going to throw some setbacks at you. It's going to make things difficult. I feel like I used to be this kind of person who tried to control things around me. I tried to make sure my friends were happy. I tried to make sure um, things were set up so that there weren't too many unpredictable elements in my life. And I think that ultimately that contributed to driving my anxiety through the roof. I even think that probably a part of my original drive of wanting to become successful, of wanting to build something of value was driven by this fear. I think I lived in this illusion that if somehow I could become a successful person, all of this anxiety would go away. I wouldn't fear the unpredictable anymore. And as common sense would say, um, that's not how it works. You know, I think being able to pursue a life of purpose had brought me huge amounts of gratitude and of joy. But ultimately, it's been all of the other work that I've had to pursue in the last few years that have brought me the inner peace that I've been seeking this whole time. I'm going to be honest here and just say that the last few years um, have not been the easiest for me. Um, but I feel in the last few months that I've finally matured enough to be able to handle all of the adversity that was thrown my way. This is by no means a pity party, but as you know, three years ago, my best friend and co-founder Matt decided to step away from Yes Theory, the project that we had committed to together and sacrificed so much for. Um, and that took a while for me to figure out how to handle. After that, I went through a breakup of a relationship that I'd spent three years in and was living with the person, two of my grandparents that I'm very close to passed away. Amongst all of this, I decided to spend significantly more time away from LA and in Paris. And recently, um, a person very close in my family was diagnosed with um, the very serious illness uh, that I would just rather not talk about at this point. But all of these challenges really cornered me. It really exposed the fact that I'd been expecting life to be a certain way. And if I did a certain amount of things in my life, if I became a certain type of person, that these problems would just not exist. Um, and life has the very humbling way of teaching you that it's not so simple. And so, as I was sitting in what felt like the ashes of my old life, looking around me, feeling quite helpless at times, I had this deep realization within me that despite everything happening being completely outside of my control, I'm still in control of how I react. I can still be the author of my own story and choose how I view, how I interpret what's happening around me. Am I the victim of all of these horrible things happening around me? Or can I be the one that overcame? I'll admit that this was the first time in my life since I started meditating that I started to struggle with my practice. I had such resistance towards the idea of sitting down and facing myself. I just didn't want to feel the feelings that I had within me. Over time, as I started to listen to the, my own message that I was preaching of seeking discomfort, I started to realize that travel had become my new comfort. As much as there's discomfort involved, wasn't the biggest discomfort I think that I was most meant to be seeking in this chapter. Over time, I realized that this is the truest, the realest, the most authentic form of discomfort I could be seeking. And I decided not to capture this process because it was a deeply personal one and one that took a lot out of me. But ultimately, facing the discomfort of my relationship with myself and how that echoes back onto the world around me was the discomfort that I needed. And as I guess I could have predicted myself, meditation was my way back. I think med meditation is one of the most misunderstood practices that is also being discussed everywhere around the world. For me, it's a practice in awareness and it's a practice in not escaping yourself. And ultimately what it allows you to do, in my view, is bridging the gap between who you're pretending to be for the world and who you really are. And if there's anything worth pursuing in life, I would say that's it. And ultimately, I had to do the thing that I was avoiding this whole time, which was to redevelop the habit and the discipline of sitting down to meditate and face myself, to sit there with my fears, 
to be present with my problems, to listen to my emotions. And these things gave me so much strength because instead of hiding, I had to sit there and learn how to become at peace with it. There's a quote that I'd like to mention that I'm sure many of you have heard a version of in your life, but it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I think that practice comes down to meditation. I think learning how to differentiate the things you can control and the things you can't control gives you a superpower because you can exist in the world with your full energy focused on the things that you can actually malleably, tangibly affect and put everything else aside. There is nothing that I do in my life that brings me more joy, that brings me more deep fulfillment than my consistent practice of sitting down and facing myself. Using these problems and these fears as a compass to move towards instead of ones to run away from, I found myself wanting to sit for longer and meditate. I've moved my timer on Headspace from 10 minutes to 15 minutes to now 20 minutes. And sometimes I find myself seeking hour-long meditations. I truly could not be more outspoken and prouder of working with Headspace and having this relationship after having spent five years using them before we even started talking to them. Go take the Seek Discomfort meditation pack on Headspace and please come back to me on here and let me know what you thought. Thank you for coming along on this travel reflection. Yeah, subscribe to this Seek Discomfort channel. We have a lot of interesting plans for it coming next year. Please check out Headspace in the description below. Okay, see you on the other side.